Yeah. Yeah, you have here literature. I just refer to literature and I can send to, it to you what he de developed in the last decades in this topic of ethical investment, especially the documents from the German Bishops' Conference, as I mentioned already. But of course, this goes back earlier, actually, uh, 1964, the year was, uh, I was born, we, uh, we got a bank, also my divine word missionaries, we started a bank. It's in Bonn, in Germany, and it's, today it's one of the major players in this field uh, in the German-speaking countries, uh, the, our, the Steiler Bank. But of course, there are other, others also, other banks also. If you can see, it, if you don't cover it, I don't know. This, uh, sorry, I, I to cover it. Maybe I have to go here. Is this better? Yeah. There are other banks also work in this field, uh, ethical investment. Also, how to how to yeah bring ethics or how to exclude uh, like polluters. What we just heard now. Yeah. There's also Jesuit writing a book uh, in the eighties. Uh, the holy use of money, uh, maybe, okay. Good, yeah. <clears throat> There's also a document uh, from uh, 97, because we talked about ecumenical initiatives in documents, it's a very important document from the Protestant church in Germany about social issues, and also here, ethical investment is here, of course, is a topic. Also, if you are interested in this document, uh, uh, it's called yeah, For a Future Founded on Solidarity and Justice, a famous document actually, about 10 years after Economic Justice for All of the US document uh, published. Yeah. And out of this developed uh, uh, criteria, how, how to apply ethical investment, uh, also how to yeah, bring ethics into this money system. So it's called the Hohenheim Leitfaden, and people develop this. Of course, it goes also back to encyclicals, as we know about, uh, even John II mentions this, uh, yeah, that what we do uh, has a moral dimension, what, how we invest, uh, what we consume has a moral dimension. I think we know about this all. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, this is document I mentioned already. Uh, yeah, in the, the Austrian Bishops Conference, uh, and, also, and the Church has also published a document, and here is a very important sentence for, for me about uh, the power of the consumer. So our personal decisions about uh, consumption, lifestyle, we, sh we share, uh, we share in informing the world. We have to remove this. Uh, we we share uh, daily informing the world. Yeah, so I think this is also a foundation of this movement. Yeah. And go into this. There are people working on this uh, to develop criteria uh, like this one from Klaus Gabriel. He's a uh, banker and a theologian. Also, in this field are people from theology working. It's interesting. He's from Tirol. <laughs> uh, he works now in Frankfurt in the biggest center for ethical investment. Also, a research institute and a promotion institute of ethical investment. He's one of, he was my colleague in Vienna. Uh, publishing this field. Uh, as I mentioned already, the German bishops published a document 10 years ago about this topic. I uh, have it here if you're interested. Uh, it's also, of course, uh, uh, electronica available. Yeah. So what is the, what is the main, let's go, not much time, yeah. What is the main rationale? Uh, this is from the Austrian Bishops Conference 2018. Wealth not only creates the economic basis for institutions and people, but also exerts an influence on the structures of the society. Yeah? Because you can do something with it, there is an obligation to use this ability responsibly. The world of financial investment largely obeys the rules governing the interaction between supply and demand. By investing, you create demand. By excluding certain markets and supplies, you remove them demand from those segments. This can bring about change in the system. So you can remove pollutants, companies producing polluting buses. Yeah. Once I was told uh, there was an interest to have uh, polluting buses in Macau because you can make more money. Yeah. The more they consume and pollute, the more money you make. I was shocked to hear this from a board member of, uh, yeah, okay. 
There is also then this principle, Cooperatio at Mandum principle, but I cannot go into this. This comes from a moral theology, also because we only can minimize negative impact. But our hands are always somewhat dirty if we cooperate with companies. Yeah, we cannot go into this. We just go here into the three main uh, jobs here. The first job is exclude is exclusionary criteria. Also, we prevent, we exclude polluting companies, for instance, or sh shares or investments. The prevention uh, method. The second is best in class approach. Also, we promote positive social and ecological conduct through long term investment to promote uh, the best in class approach. And the third one is commitment or engagement approach uh, you know, with companies for change. What does this mean practically? Let's see here for countries or companies like abortion, of course, this is not ex exclusion method, the first one, to exclude in, uh, investments and money. Abortion, breaches of labor law, embryo stem cells, so you see here pornography, uh, addictive substances, corruption, this is a society, armaments, <coughs> then uh, death penalty, of course, uh, totalitarian regimes, these are not countries, unfair business practices. Then on the level of creation, exploitative environmental conduct, this would be polluting what we have just before, where nuclear power is excluded. Uh, countries and companies. Uh, of course, this is clear. Yeah, you can read this on your own. Animal experiments. Yeah. Yeah. The, what is the, the third one? The third method is commitment, engagement. There's the vote strategy. Also, if you vote, the shareholders vote, they put a certain power pressure on companies. A voice strategy. Also, you get in dialogue with companies about issues like polluting or reducing uh, carbon impact uh, emissions and so on. Or the exit strategy, so you tell the company, if you don't change, we will uh, stop our investment, we exit. Of course, this is called a filter. This whole is a filter. Also, this, the first is to exclude. Uh, so you have a universe, a universe of investments in your, in your interest and in what follows your criteria, of course. But then you exclude certain investments, companies, shares. Then you go to the best in class approach. And then you have your ethically sustainable investment universe. Yeah. Okay, there are steps. We can jump over the steps. Yeah, if you want to read more about this in, in this book, Tanner Turkson wrote an article in English, and Klaus Gabriel in German in the book I published some weeks ago, uh, Professor Trift. Yeah, this is here. But let's now uh, have a look, I have the document uh, from the Austin Bishops Conference, you see here from 2018, for all congregations and all dioceses have to follow these guidelines. Yeah, uh, we could take a look. Uh, let's have a look. First, we can have a look in our Steiler board. Let's have a look here here, like a little bit bigger here. Can you read it, so for instance, uh, climate protection? Yeah, like production of crude oil. This is now a field of environmental issues. Production of crude oil or use of coal to generate electricity. So this is also, uh, all shares, all investments who have a higher percentage than 30% are excluded. You cannot invest. You have to exclude such companies to work with them. No. This would be the exclusion criteria or uh, only 0 to 30% is, is allowed for best in class uh, approach. Or another example, let's see another example. Nuclear power, you see nuclear power is excluded. Nuclear power, uh, okay, now 10% are allowed, only 10% shares is allowed. Yeah. Or another example, last example, and finish. Yeah, here you see 
Livestock farming, also engagement in factory farming, mass transportation of livestock or the animals or fur farming is completely excluded. So the company or the shares do not are not allowed to have any contact with such uh, business. Or here, animal testing is the same. Okay, thank you very much.